So here are two nifty formulas that we just came up with to solve the integral that we're so interested in, the integral of cosine squared x. But before we do that, I want to show you something uh, cool, because these equations are really quite remarkable if you think about them, that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2, and cosine squared is equal to 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. It seems a little uh, incredible almost, but if you think about you know some things that you know about sine squared and cosine squared, like the first thing you know is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Well, if I add the these two things, am I going to get 1? 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2 plus 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. Well, what's going to happen is we already have a common denominator, so we can just combine the numerators. The negative cosine and the positive cosine cancel out, and we get 2 over 2, which equals 1. So that doesn't prove that these formulas are correct. Our derivation that we did proves that they're correct, but this is sort of an interesting um, consequence where you can sort of see things from different angles. Um, so I like that. Anyway, there's that now. Let us see how we can use these formulas to find out things like what is the integral of cosine squared x dx. Well, uh, we just replace the cosine squared with this formula. So again, how it really comes down to is cosine squared x is something I don't know how to integrate. Cosine of 2x is something I do know how to integrate. So I'm changing what I don't know into what I do know. That's like really sort of a core idea of mathematics, is how can we shift and transform um, things that we don't know something about into something that we do know something about. All right, so that's how that looks. Um, I have found, not all books do this, I've found that it's usually useful to factor out the one half. It just makes everything easier to write because you have this. Uh, right, and then you can just do the antiderivative right away there. Um, you can do uh, one half of the integral of one is x. Um, be careful when you're doing the antiderivative of cosine two x uh, because that's an inside linear func uh, function, so that's a linear u substitution. U equals two x, so du equals two dx. Divide the two over, and you're going to end up with um, uh, one half sine and then keeping the inside function the same, right? So we've, ways we've talked about that before, you are doing the antiderivative, keep the inside function the same, and multiply by 1 over g prime. That's a way of handling this linear u substitution. Since we've just done the integral, we're going to put a plus c there. Um, you could leave it like that, or you could uh, distribute out the 1 half and say that this equals x over 2 plus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. All right, so that's how we can do integral of sine squared. Now, using this and also using techniques you already know, you can do other powers of sine and cosine. So here's how we, you know, we did integral of cosine squared. By the way, we want to remember this one because it's going to come back to us. Um, I mean, you don't have to memorize it. Just, we'll, we'll, I'll remind you when it comes time. All right, so now, uh, what if I had integral of sine cubed x dx? All right, well, this one you can rewrite and actually not have to use any of the half angle formulas. So I'll show you how to do that. But it, it does revolve around identities. And you know, all of this is about techniques for integrating this type of function. So what I do is I rewrite this as sine squared x times sine of x. Why would you do that? Well, I'm doing that because the sine squared x that I can write as 1 minus cosine squared x and then keep the sine x dx, and then I can distribute the sine x oops, <laughs> equals integral of sine x minus cosine squared x sine x dx. All right, now I already know the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, and then I'm, uh, well, I guess how we're going to work this, I guess we'll work it like this. So when we go to do this integral, I guess this is how I wrote it. Let's, let's, let's go like this. It's minus integral of cosine squared x sine x dx. So basically I'm saying uh, I'm going to defer doing this one. We'll think about it, but this one I can do right away. Okay, so now here's what you do with this one. Look, this is a u substitution because here's u squared and here's du. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that's actually negative du. We're just going to cancel with a negative out there. So essentially what you're doing here is we're going to do a u substitution u equals cosine x, du equals negative sine x dx, negative du equals sine x dx. And then we can just do that substitution, and then what we're going to have here is I'm going to keep my negative cosine x in the front, the negative I'm going to cancel with the negative out here and make that plus, and then I just have integral of u squared du, right? So cosine is u, so we're going to, our cosine squared is going to be u squared. Um, 
sine of x is really negative du. I pull the negative out here and combine with the negative that was already there. All right, and then you can just do that antiderivative because uh, I know the antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over 3. Now I've done all my integrals, so I'm going to put the plus c. As, soon as, you, as long as you've still got an integral hanging in there, the plus c is implicitly part of the integral. But once I don't have any integrals anymore, now I have to put the plus c. Now I should also substitute back. My substitution was u equals cosine x. So this equals negative cosine x plus 1 third cosine cubed x plus c. All right, so now we've done the integral of cosine squared and sine cubed. Cosine squared required our new technique of using half angle formula. Sine cubed just required a clever use of identities and our good old u substitution. All right, so we're going to look at a couple more cases next.